Hey guys, NerdKing101 here, and today we're just going to be talking about our, my expectations and predictions and just what I think about Avengers Endgame before we see it. Today, as of the recording of this video, it is April 18th, so this was recorded last week, it's just probably going up on Wednesday or Tuesday the following week, but the point of this video is to just gauge my thoughts and put them down in a video before Avengers Endgame comes out and before I see it, before anything is known about it. But beyond the leaked, the leaked footage, I know some footage was leaked, I have not seen that footage. I do not plan to see that footage. All I have seen are the trailers, and this video will be going up like a day before Endgame. So any comments that are on in this video, I will not be looking at them until after Endgame. I will be looking at the comments. Just to be safe, I apologize, I like to be really quick with the comments, but as you have seen in my previous videos on the matter, I've been watching and waiting for these movies for over 10 years, and I'm not going to get it ruined by a YouTube comment, I'm sorry, I'm, it's not a risk I'm willing to take. When this video goes up, I won't be using social media or anything, I, like, I'll be just purely trying to just stay away from the internet entirely. Yeah, I don't trust anybody not to spoil me. But, uh, and just in case you're wondering about the set or lack of, like, green screen and coolness, um, out of the recording of this video, we're leaving, the whole family leaving on, like, an Easter Sunday, Easter weekend trip, and our landlord is also coming tomorrow, so I need to keep my room, you know, nice and nice looking, and I don't really have the time to set up a green screen. It's just a time thing, so, yeah, there's a lack of that, but yeah. We've wasted way too much time with my rambling and tangents. Let's talk about Endgame. First of all, I am of the opinion that I think most of that footage is fake. Like, I honestly, I feel like they were so secretive, and then all of a sudden, two trailers in, they just dropped everything, and they started releasing a ton of it. And it seemed very strange to me with how little they were releasing. And they've already admitted that there's a lot of CGI trickery in it. So I definitely think a lot of it is just CGI tricks. I'm going to go on a limb here and say, I think 85% of the trailer is fake. I'm gonna, or manipulated or misleading. I think there's a couple, like, I think that Tony Stark, Steve Rogers scene, when they shake hands, that is fake. That was filmed much like the uh, Wakanda scene with the Hulk in the Infinity War trailer, that was filmed just for the uh, trailer. I mean, giving that away, because that was something to all of Infinity War. We were like, when are they going to meet up? Then they didn't. And that was something we've all been waiting for. That's one of the like, big things in this movie. It's the Captain America Iron Man reunion. And to give that away in a trailer, it's unbelievably dumb. It, it, it feels really weird, especially when you're being so secretive that they would give away one of the biggest attractions of the movie in a trailer. So I think that's fake. Other things that I think are fake... And I think the scenes with Tony Stark, I think anything with Tony Stark on Earth is questionable. I'm also not sure about the scene with Captain Marvel. I do think that's real, but I'm not sure how much of it is real. But I do think the stuff with Captain Marvel and Thor with her, with him uh, summoning uh, Stormbreaker, I think that's all real. Sorry about all the jump cuts, by the way. I'm recording this and I'm coughing a lot, so you're probably going to see a lot of jump cuts. But one thing I do think is going to happen in this movie is I think Captain America is going to die, and I think Iron Man is going to die. I'm calling now those two characters, I'm not sure about anybody else, but those two characters are going to die. Many people throw around the idea of um, Chris Hemsworth's Thor dying, but this is the thing about Thor. This is the thing about Thor. Thor had three movies. One of them was considered a success. Like, a success in the sense that people really, really responded to it. The first two Thor movies did well enough to keep making more Thor movies, but let's be honest, and they kind of needed to make one last Thor movie to set up Endgame and Infinity War, but let's be honest with ourselves, the first two Thor movies were pretty weak, but I think especially now that Thor has been so reinvigorated as a character, to get rid of Hensworth would be pretty dumb, especially when he's so interested in playing the character. He's not like Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. who are clearly tired and clearly ready to move on. Chris Hensworth clearly wants to play Thor. So it's almost like, why get rid of one of the characters that wants to play him? 
Like, why would you do that? So I don't think they're gonna kill Thor. Uh, I don't think they're gonna kill a Scarlett Johansson Black Widow just because there's a Black Widow movie being made. And I honestly don't think a movie about a permanently killed off character would do well. Especially when the permanently killed off character is Black Widow. And not that people don't like Black Widow, but I mean, like, if you were to make a movie about, say, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, like, in, like a prequel origin movie, that would probably have more weight behind it, because people are interested in Quicksilver. Quicksilver has a fan base, an interest, he's a character that has something there. Let's be honest, I, people have been asking for this Black Widow movie for over ten years, they never made it, and it's, like, probably eight years too late at this point, for the Black Widow movie. But, so I, but I don't think Black Widow's gonna die. Um, I don't think Rocket will die. I think Nebula will probably die, personally, I just... I honestly don't see what else Nebula can do. Especially because I'm of the opinion that the way it's going to work is that all the people that were snapped will come back. But only people that are snapped, like that died via the snapping, as I like to call it, I know it's actually called it decimation, but I like snapping more. I like calling it the snapping. So all the people that died in the snapping will come back, but I do not think characters like Gamora, Handolf, Handolf, Heimdolf, 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 Gamora, Loki, Nebula, she died. I think characters that Thanos kills with individual or other combinations of the stones will be dead permanently. Or characters that die by other means, like that are killed physically, like Loki was or Gamora was. I think characters like that aren't going to come back. Because this way, you can bring back all the popular big names that were killed. You can bring back the Guardian. You can bring back uh, Peter Parker, Spider Man. You can bring back Doctor Strange. You can bring back Black Panther. Also, the Guardians are coming back, especially now with all the trouble they went through to get Jane Gunn back on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah, the Guardians are coming back. That would be outrageous if they didn't. They would not have gone through all that trouble for Gunn if the, he didn't have a role to play in that movie. Um, another character that I could see dying, this I haven't been thrown around a lot, I haven't seen thrown around a lot, but I could see Pepper Potts dying. Because I feel like if Iron Man died, I feel like it would be kind of nice if Pepper died. Like, they both, they die together. You know what I mean? Like, they both die because their arcs are kind of tied together as characters. And if you're going to kill Tony Stark, just kill Pepper Potts. Like, they leave that whole, kill off the whole Iron Man thread permanently. Or another thing you could do would have it be that they can see the child possibly before... Tony Stark leaves to fight Thanos, and then you could use, like, time travel, aging, technology, shenanigans to age up that child. And maybe you could make that child some version of Riri Williams. Almost like if you would read any DC comic, what DC, what uh, Ben did, did with Jonathan Kent, where he made him go off into space and he came back and he was like 17, and he was Bendis Radical! You could bend it like writing about teenagers, so he made Superman's son from a sweet ten-year-old boy into a rad teenager. You should have given him a mullet, Bendis. No, no, this is not the video for me to hate on Brian Michael Bendis' Superman decision and how he ruined what was probably my favorite point in Superman's history. That's not what this is about. That's not what this is a video is about. Maybe I'll do another video on why I don't like Bendis' Superman stuff and why I, I dropped it immediately. But this is the thing. This is the thing about Endgame. I think Endgame is going to kill up a lot of characters. I think it's going to kill Iron Man as I said. I think it's going to kill Captain America. Okay, and also, the Captain America goes back in time nonsense. Like, that theory is nonsense. Because this is the whole point. The entire point is that Captain America came out of the ice a different person. Just because he goes back in time, is it going to undo the effect that had on him mentally? The whole point is that Captain America comes out and he's like, this is what I am. I'm a superhero. I save people. This is what I do. This is who I am. Like, Steve Rogers, Steve Rogers isn't really alive. Steve Rogers died in the ice. But Steve Rogers, they were dating Peggy Carter and had a best friend. 
and has, and has his friend, the Howling Commando, that were punching Red Skull. That guy dead. I'm Captain America now. I mean, I still go by Steve Rogers. I still act like Steve Rogers. I still have friends. But at the end of the day, I'll never stop. Like, this is what I am. Which is basically what they've been building towards in all these movies. And this is all Steve Rogers really knows. And he's just trying to do the best he can. In this new strange world. When he was in World War II, it was very easy. It was very black and white. America good, Nazi bad. It was very simple, easy to understand. Then he comes into the future and shield and corrupted by Hydra Nazis. And the whole thing is blown out of proportion. Him and, he, and other superheroes are fighting. Him and Tony Stark are having a throwdown and wrecking an airport. I mean, like, the whole thing is insane. But at the, at the end of the day, he's still a good man. And that's the whole point. Regardless of what happened, he still is a good man. A great example of this is while he's fighting Spider-Man in Civil War, when he realizes, he quickly realizes Spider-Man is a child. And then he starts having fun. He's, he's nice. Like, he's not, he doesn't act the way he does around anybody else around Spider-Man. Around Spider-Man, he's just talking to Spider-Man. He's, he's just talking to Spider-Man. And he realizes, this is just a good kid that Iron Man is kind of famed in. Famous. Famed. See, I don't, that Tony Stark has tricked into doing these things. Not the most tricked, but clearly kind of manipulated a little bit into fighting for him. And once he realizes that, he, him and Spider-Man just have fun because... Spider-Man's just a kid doing what he thinks is right because some big, cool, famous guy asked for help. Captain America and Spider-Man just have fun. They exchange where they live, like Peter Parker says he's from Queen, Captain America says he's from Brooklyn, and it's just, it's just this whole fun interaction. And it shows that, I mean, in the day, Captain America would never, would, didn't want to hurt a kid. Like, regardless of his opinions about the Accords, he immediately was like, oh, there's a child. How are you? You're awesome, you're cool, you're strong. Like, he's quipping with Spider-Man. He's having a good time, yeah, Spider-Man's a kid. At the end of the day, that's what Captain America is. But the whole point, you know, he's not gonna stop. That's the point. Captain America isn't gonna stop being a super soldier. He's not gonna stop being a superhero. And I think to ask him to stop would be almost a worse face for him. For it to take away his ability to help people. I think for him... Now that he had that power, it would be horrible. It would be torture not being able to do it. So the idea of putting him in the, in the past and taking away his serum just sounds kind of like a bad ending from the character. And Captain America gonna die either way. In, no. And Captain America gonna die in any way. It should be standing up for what he believes is right. And standing up for what America stands for the American dream. The basis of the American dream which is liberty, freedom, and things of that nature. That, that's what Captain America stands for. That's what Captain America should die fighting for. Um, I'm also predicting two things. One, Captain America's speech from Infinity Gauntlet will be in this movie. I'm 99% sure the speech when he stands up to Thanos and then Thanos breaks the shield, that will be in this movie probably right before he dies. And another thing will be in this movie, and I'm not sure who's going to say it. I have three theories. One, Cap will say it. Two, Iron Man will say it. And two, they'll say it together. Like, one will say the first line. The other person will say the other line. The line is, of course, it's going to be uttered in the movie. It has to be, or people are going to riot. Avengers Assemble. Also, a theory I have, which would be really cool, when people talk about Stanley cameo, what if Stanley had two cameos? What if he had the regular cameo, cameo, and what if he narrated the beginning of the movie like he did the old Avenger books? Like, and then came a day unlike any other, when Earth's mightiest hero were united against a common threat. And then on that day, they became the Avengers. And then he's like, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America. But instead of Ant-Man and Wap, he's like, Hawk, Black Widow, Hawkeye. The Avengers. Like, I feel like that would be really cool if they did something like a tribute to that. I would re I really want to hear that line in the movie. That classic Stanley. Maybe if Stanley doesn't even do it, maybe, maybe the actor could say it. I feel like that'd be a great way to pay tribute to him. 
Um, I think they're going to be the post credit scene. I have no idea what they're going to be. I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm inclined to say they're going to set up the next big bad guy. The next big bad. But then I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, the Russo brothers have come out right instead, like, legally. Like, they're being completely honest, in my opinion, when they say this. There was no production possible way to film anything with those Fox characters. So, no, they didn't get the characters and go shoot a quick CGI crazy thing with Galactus turning around. Like, it was, no. It's not like the Forma scene from Avengers. When they bought it, they called somebody into the, they called them in. They all sat down in a restaurant in their costume and they filmed like a two second scene. You're talking about like a lot of money, a lot of CGI. Hiring an actor. You have to hire somebody to play Galactus in this case. It's not happening. There is no Galactus man. The most. The most I could see. Is that maybe they have a shot that is literally just a pair of hands. And then it's Nick. And you see Claw come out. Or maybe something with Ryan Reynolds. But this, this is all very unlikely. It's very likely that they're just going to be like a far from home post credit scene. Like two post credit scenes for other one serious one for an upcoming Marvel movie. And then I would say probably something sad. Like instead of a funny one, it will probably cut to like maybe it will cut to like after the funeral for Captain America and Iron Man or something like that. I definitely don't think they're gonna end the movie on a funny cut scene. That would be weird. It would be really weird if they chose this movie to end on a funny cutscene. This isn't Ant-Man and the Wasp. But, um, other things that I think could happen in Endgame. I am of the opinion that there won't be time travel. I am of the opinion that all this time travel is all the Russos. I think this is all fabricated. I think, because I have confidence that the Russos are better storytellers than to resort to time travel. I'm confident in that. They've made... Three of the best movies I've ever seen, like, Captain America Civil War, Winter Soldier, and Infinity War are brilliant, they're fantastic, they're some of the best movies I've ever seen from a direction standpoint. I don't think anybody would ever argue, despite your opinion on the D films, that the Russo brothers are bad directors, and they don't know how to make a damn good movie. So I'm looking at that, and I'm like, would, would these genius writers really resort to time to travel? Does that really sound realistic? Not really. It doesn't sound realistic to me. I don't think the two writers of this caliber would resort to time travel. I don't think they would. So, what I think... I think they're aware, though, that that's the most likely theory. They became aware of that very early on. And they said, let's play with it. And then they did a ton of fake stuff. Much like how they had actors come on some set to film fake set, set photos and, and post fake leaks on Instagram. I I feel like I feel like it would just be so I would be so I would be so surprised if they resorted to that level of cheapness in their storytelling after how brilliant they've been. That I feel really confident saying that I think this is all a trick. I think it's all a trick to make you think they're doing time travel when they're actually doing something else. I also think there's obviously going to be more than one battle with Thanos, though. There's obviously going to be the battle when the Avengers first go to try to fight him with Captain Marvel and Storm, where they all go. And then I think they're going to lose that. I think they're going to lose because there's a thing when they're in the spaceship and Black Widow has the blonde hair. From Infinity War. So this is immediately after. And then I think we're going to cut. And we're going to jump ahead. And I think it's going to be a thing. Where they're going to survive. And they're going to keep trying. And maybe we'll lose some people along the way. Maybe we'll lose Rocket. And we'll lose Nebula. And we'll lose Rhodey. And it'll be annual. Not like die. But they'll be out of commission. Things will happen. And it'll be annual. It'll be the original six. And I think it's going to weigh down. I think Black Widow going to go down. I think Hawkeye will go down. And I think Hulk will go down. And I think Thor will go down. Then I think Captain America and Iron Man will be the last one standing. And I think Captain America will sacrifice himself. And I think, we'll, and I think him and Iron Man are going to sacrifice themselves. That, I think they're going to team up. Because this movie is definitely going to focus on that relationship heavily. 
I'm very interested. I do think they're going to be sort of the buddy cop feeling with Captain America and Thor. With Captain America and Thor. With uh, Captain Marvel and Thor. Solely because... Uh, if you look at the trailers, people are clearly really liking that. And clearly they had this buddy cop, even in the press release, they're really hyping up, like, the Thor, Captain Marvel, buddy cop, super powerful, strongest Avenger buddy team thing. Like, people are already saying the next Marvel movie should be a Captain Marvel, Brie Larson, and Chris Hemsworth Thor team-up movie, which I'm down for. I mean, Brie Larson and Chris Hemsworth have great chemistry, and their character could work. Because they're both the two strongest Avengers. And they're both these outlandish, ridiculous characters. Captain Marvel is a lady who can take on an entire space army by herself by shooting photon blasts out of her hands and can basically go Super Saiyan. And Thor is a clown Norse god that can shoot lightning out of his hands and has a magic axe. I mean, you combine those two things, give it to like Taite, yeah. give it to like Jane Gunn or Taika Waititi. And let them have their fun, like directing the best, the best buddy cop comedy romance, whatever they want to make it together. I don't care as long as we get a Thor Captain Marvel comedy buddy cop thing. I don't care, but I feel like that would be really cool. But I feel like I feel like we're gonna focus a lot on that. Um, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna get more focus on uh, Captain America this time. And I think, but I think that the Russo brothers have actually said that, like Infinity War with Iron, Infinity War. Well, well, the Infinity War was Thanos' movie. But the Avenger we followed the most was probably Iron Man. And I feel like this is going to be a love letter to Cap. And it's especially obvious by the fact that uh, Iron Man, Tony Stark, is in the middle and the front of the Infinity War poster doing this. Like, he's like the main attraction. And in this, is Captain America with his shield. And I'm really excited for that. Um, we're obviously going to get a beer scaling scene. Like, we're obviously going to get it. But one thing I think will be interesting is to see how it's chased the movie that there was no criticism in between the filming. Like, so they can't piggyback off of uh, the criticisms and the praise Infinity War got. They can't piggyback off of that because they were both filmed right at the same time. So it's not like they can really play up. The, uh, it's not like they're going to make a lot of joke, a big joke moment when Captain America had to shave his beard because they had no idea that was going to get, like, the reaction it got. But, like, Chris Evans growing a beard was going to be something. And it was like, Chris Evans with a beard looks amazing. That's Cap. They had no idea. They had no idea. Like, there were some things that they predicted. Like, they predicted that Rocket was going to have a good relationship with Bucky. Like, that's obvious. But, in general, like, I don't think there was much they could have predicted and, you know, so I'm interested to see how the lack of uh, having that criticism available to them affects the movie. I'm interested to see how it plays out pacing-wise, because it's a three-hour-long movie. Three hours and five minutes, I'm sorry. And it'll be interesting to see how it being three hours and five minutes, like, affects the movie. Because most movies aren't that long. I'm gonna have to be careful, but I'm a drinker. I like to drink water while I watch movies. During Infinity War, I drank two bottles of water early in the film, and I had to go halfway, and I could barely hold it. So, I, I what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy two bottles of water, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have my watch. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll do it, and then I'll like have to pick a certain point, like a certain amount of time. Like I have to, I'll drink a bottle of water, but then I have to wait like 40 minutes before I can drink more, or something like that. I gotta plan this properly. Personally, I would have liked to have an intermission, but from what they've said, there is no place to put an intermission in this movie. My expectations are high. I'm going to call it now. I think this is going to outsell Avatar. I mean, it's already outselling things like The Force Awakens. It's already close to outselling The Force Awakens with pre-sales, just for pre-ordering tickets. I mean, it's insane. So yeah, I think this is going to surpass Avatar. I think this is going to be the best-selling movie of all time. In every regard, domestically, uh, nationwide, in America. I think I think it's going to be a really, really good movie. I have nothing but high hope for this movie. And yeah, I think this is going to be the best, my favorite movie of all time. And I think this is going to be the best movie of the decade. I'm calling it now. 2019's Avengers Endgame will be the best movie of the decade. 
right on the end. Right on the end. I'm I'm super excited for this movie. But once again, I've talked about it. I've rambled. This has made no research. This is just what I have in my head as of a Thursday, April 18th, 2019, about what I expect from Avengers Endgame. You were probably seeing this a day or two before Avengers Endgame. You were probably already seen another one or two MCU videos. I have a couple things I want to talk about and videos. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them done and upload them in time. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like. Subscribe for more videos. Uh, if you're new, definitely subscribe. Because this Thursday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be doing a live Post Avengers Endgame stream discussion, fanboy extravaganza. I may get food. I've never done like the whole food on stream before. I'm probably gonna have food this time. I'm gonna have drinks, food. We're gonna be right here. It's gonna be awesome. Also, you'll probably have noticed that a lot of the videos around this time and it's a, a little bit of the future don't have the fancy set I had. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to start using. Reason for that is really simple. I am trying to start using this new set. I am trying to start using the green screen more. And you're going to notice that probably some of the videos you've already seen. And some of the upcoming videos. But the thing is, is that I'm going on an Easter Sunday trip. I'm going out to my house, summer house with my family. And the landlord is coming tomorrow. And I don't have time to either record all the stuff that I want with the green screen. Because that, that takes way longer. And, I, and he's going to be in my room. So I need to keep the room nice. And we're leaving really early tomorrow morning. So I'd rather not get the green screen out. And make a whole mess. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did. You can uh, leave it a like. Subscribe once again. This Thursday. 10.30pm. Eastern Standard Time. Avengers Endgame. Live stream. Discussion. Extravaganza. Fanboy. Food. Drinks. It'll be awesome. Hey. Maybe if you come. Maybe I'll give you internet cookies. I don't know. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe. Tell me what you're predicting and expecting from Endgame in the comment section down below. Uh, check out all my social media, which will be linked in the doobly doo on screen, which will be listed on screen, linked in the description, all that. And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is Nerd King 101, signing out.